Hello YouTube viewers and random Doctor Who fans. We're here in Cardiff, we're behind me. Somewhere in that general area is Roadblock Studios, where they actually film Doctor Who. And today we're gonna to take a little bit of a trip, an experience if you will, but not in there. But you see, just a stone's throw away is this, the Doctor Who experience. And we're gonna go experience some Doctor Who, I suppose. So what are we waiting for? Let's go! Located on Cardiff Bay, the experience stands a short distance away from the Doctor Who studios and gives fans a chance to see the relics of the show's 50 year plus history up close. In this video I will be taking you on a tour of the experience, from the Gallifreyan Museum to the sets, the props, the costumes and the variety of weird and wonderful aliens and enemies the Doctor has faced over the course of the series so far. With the doors now sadly closed on this version of the attraction, I thought now more than ever would be the perfect time to document this ultimate museum of all things Doctor Who. As well as that, we will be checking out some of the locations around Cardiff used in this show. Never really seen a monument dedicated to a fictional character before. So come with me as we experience Doctor Who like never before. This is the Doctor Who Experience, The Experience. The adventure begins from the moment you first enter its doors, with the costumes of the Twelfth Doctor and Clara greeting you as you walk in. You're also met with several more costumes, such as a Gallifreyan soldier and the curator's clothing as well. That is terrifying. <laughs> Various props from Doctor Who can also be found in the foyer, with some protected by transparent boxes. Someday you can just walk past the fairs. Never gonna happen. Another exciting aspect is the handprints left by those who have been such an integral part of the show over the numerous years, from writers to former companions and even doctors. Look at that, my hand's the same size as Tom Baker's. It's a sign. And roughly the same size as Peter's. I've got the hands of a doctor. Daleks from all eras are present throughout the event, as well as more props which can be found in the waiting line for the Gallifreyan Museum Tour, which was our first port of call. I'm not going to spoil it, but it's a great little trip in the TARDIS as you encounter such foes as the Daleks and Weeping Angels as you race through time and space to save the Doctor. It's a brilliant interactive aspect of the experience and one you definitely need to check out yourself. Following on from the Gallifrey Museum tour, I find myself entering the first Doctor's console room. Not only was it beautiful to see in real life, but the colours were so vibrant and brought a real sense of life to this iconic 60s set. The console itself was a remarkable throwback, with its various gadgets and gizmos laid out in perfect simplicity. It really was a joy to see it up close, and even though I was warned to keep my sweaty, nerdy hands off of it, I just couldn't resist ever so delicately flicking a lever. Oh dear, that's me told off. Totally worth it though. The next set recreation may be small, but nonetheless iconic, with a Dalek peering out from that instantly recognisable Scarrow doorway. I then find myself immersed in the world of 1960s television production, with one corner completely dedicated to memorabilia from the first Doctor's era, including a copy of the first ever Doctor Who annual, and a recreation of the original police box in brilliant blue with its white window sills. Sitting below the fourth Doctor's police box, parked alongside the firsts, was his faithful companion, K9. The experience even includes Bessie, the vehicle of choice for the third Doctor, funnily enough parked next to the fifth Doctor's console room, which was unfortunately off limits, but it still looked immaculate. I wanted to press every single one of those buttons, but we did get the opportunity for a top-down look at that retro futuristic console with its myriad of 80s control switches. 
But the ultimate jewel in the crown was none other than the ninth and 10th Doctor's console room, complete with their police box standing proudly at its edge. I didn't fully become an all-out Doctor Who fan until the show came back in 2005, so this really was a joy to behold. Just a walk on that wire mesh floor and gaze up at all of the roundels and coral columns, see the balconies and cables hanging down from up above, and ultimately the console itself was jaw-dropping. This was the version of the TARDIS that I first fell in love with as a teenager. And even though it looked smaller than how it was depicted on TV, I felt so special to see it. It's bluer than I thought it would be. I always thought it was green. Well, strangely enough, this display actually changes colours from blue to green. In the series, it was always a green colour, but the morphing lights explains why it looks blue in the 50th anniversary episode, as this very set was used for the 10th Doctor's console room in the Day of the Doctor. It was all here, from the various bits cobbled together to make up the control panels, to the monitor which actually works, complete with its post-it note on the edge. Even that bizarre chair which has been modified into a sofa stood proudly behind the console itself. I was in nerd paradise and I didn't want to go. But there was still so much more to see. That basically covered the ground floor, so it was time to move upstairs to the room which held the costumes of the aliens, enemies, companions and even doctors. At the top of the stairs rests the face of Bo, complete with his tank. This was a gorgeous creature to see on the show, and in real life it's even more impressive. The walls are littered with various costumes from all of the Doctor's tenures, and it's quite remarkable to see the classic monsters placed alongside those from the modern era. A bigger emphasis has been placed on those seen in the last few years, as the likes of the Sontaran armour and the monsters from Series 8 in particular are placed in the centre of the room. The chained up Weeping Angel statue from the Angels Take Manhattan was a particular standout and gave some of the younger visitors a real fright. Naturally, it wouldn't be a Doctor Who experience without the Daleks, and they are everywhere. Multiple incarnations of the evil pepper pots litter the room, from the Paradigm and Stone Pandorica models to a version made from something a little bit weaker than Dalekanium. Young children even get the chance to operate the arms of a bronze Dalek which is fixed in place, while even the model of the Dalek Emperor has been included in this fantastic museum. A particularly exquisite piece of the Dalek memorabilia is a set recreation from The Magician's Apprentice, featuring Davros's chamber, complete with a mock-up of the creator of the Daleks himself, surrounded by cables, just like in the series 9 two-parter. To the side rests a bronze Dalek, which has been completely opened up, much like the one Clara operates in The Witch's Familiar. More props are on display here too, such as two versions of the Doctor's teleport device, Missy's stick and her device as well, the Vortex manipulator, and the Doctor's aged and worn sonic screwdriver which he abandoned with the young Davros. It almost makes me cry seeing the sonic in this state. Not because it's wrecked, but because I wasn't the one who wrecked it. Classic versions of Davros are also on display, including that weird Emperor version from Remembrance of the Daleks. The outfits sported by the Paternoster Gang are also part of the collection, but a big surprise came when I saw the Torchwood section. Set against the backdrop of the hub's safe door, the costumes of the entire team as well as a few others can be viewed. Captain Jack's desk has also been included, and it has been beautifully littered with various pieces of memorabilia. Toward the back of the room there is a section dedicated entirely to Clara, and at its centre resides the police box painted by Riggsy as a memorial to her. This looks really wonderful close up, with the shading on the floor is particularly eye-catching. Adorning each side of the box are costumes which Jenna Coleman wore during her time on the show. And as well as that, to the side we get the costumes of some of the more well-known companions. The mock-up of the barn from the 50th anniversary episode is lovingly dedicated to the late John Hurt and features the War Doctor's TARDIS, the costume of the moment interface, as well as the open version of the moment featuring its big red button. Also tying into this are the costumes of the 8th Doctor and a sisterhood of Karn outfit from the Night of the Doctor. We also get yet another TARDIS console room, this time it's from the 4th Doctor's era, but just like the 5th Doctor's, it's sadly not accessible. 
Finally, there is a section dedicated fully to Series 9, which offers the teleportation chamber as seen in Heaven Sent as the centerpiece. On the sides can be seen the board covering the Doctor's adventures from the Zygon two-parter, as well as the Day of the Doctor. And included in this section is the red and blue Osgood box props. Rounding it off, we have a few more costumes seen throughout the series, including the clothes Clara wore in the final three episodes to feature her, and has the Trap Street facade behind it. And, of course, various props of the Doctor's numerous sonic screwdrivers are on display, and this also includes his sonic cane from Let's Kill Hitler. And perhaps one of the best parts of the clothing display is the outfits of each Doctor, arranged in a semicircle at the far end of the main room. The experience also hosted opportunities for a set visit, where you could step aboard the currently used TARDIS console room. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to take part in this, as filming for Series 10 was taking place while we were there. I've seen some videos of it online, and I'm extremely jealous of all those who got to see this beautiful set up close. And with that, we exited through the gift shop, and our experience came to an end. Fortunately, a large part of Doctor Who is filmed right here in Cardiff, so various landmarks have popped up in this show since its revival, starting off with the Millennium Centre and Roald Dahl Place. The Arts Centre is home to ballet, dance, theatre, comedy, musicals and opera, with the text on the front of the building translating to Creating Truth Like Glass from Inspiration's Furnace, and In the Stones, Horizons Sing, written in English. It is notable for making several appearances in Doctor Who, and the spin-off series, Torchwood. Even the lobby has appeared as a hospital in New Earth, and again in The Girl Who Waited. Outside, the water tower marks the lift entrance to the Torchwood base in this spin-off show. So behind me we have the waterfall, the iconic waterfall here at Roald Dahl Pass. And this, as we know, extends all the way down to where Torchwood 3 used to be. But obviously it's not there anymore because it go boom. I guess you could call it a boom town. I'll see myself out. This rift's a lot wetter than I thought it was going to be. Last one off the bucket list. Washed hands on rift. Crazy, isn't it? That's all that's left of the Torchwood Hub. Really makes you think. It may be the location of the rift in the TV series, but at Roald Dahl Place, the universe of Doctor Who has bled into reality, with a fan-made feature found at the docks. So down here at Cardiff Bay, just a stone's throw away from the Millennium Centre, we have Ianto Shrine from Torchwood, which is actually quite fascinating when you think about it. I've never really seen a monument dedicated to a fictional character before. It just shows the love and it shows the reach of the Doctor Who and Torchwood community that this would actually be erected here and maintained. The restaurant on the pier, as seen briefly in the episode Boomtown, is also located across from the shrine. Another structure worth mentioning is the Pierhead Building, seen prominently at the end of Last of the Time Lords. Built in 1897, it served as the headquarters for the Butte Dock Company, eventually becoming the administrative office for the Port of Cardiff in 1947, and finally today it serves as a Welsh history museum. The clock on the building has been dubbed the Baby Big Ben, or the Big Ben of Wales. Standing in the city centre, Cardiff Castle is one of the most iconic landmarks in Wales, dating all the way back to the medieval era. It has been used prominently in Doctor Who, in such recent episodes as Robot of Sherwood and Heaven Sent. Our final stop was at a recent addition to the universe of Doctor Who, Eddie's Diner, located on Cardiff Bay. An American-themed diner, it was used in The Impossible Astronaut and Hellbent, and most are surprised to learn that it's not a set, but a real restaurant, which is open to the public. We couldn't resist going inside and eating at the Doctor's favourite American diner. That's one tasty-looking burger. Its ties to the show are evident by the back wall, which has been made to look like the front of the police box, also subtly alluding to the entrance to the actual TARDIS as used by Clara and me in Hellbent. We had travelled to Cardiff for the Doctor Who experience. 
and that is exactly what we had received. The experience itself was a must for any Doctor Who fan. Even this video doesn't do it justice and I hope we see it again in some form in the future. Cardiff is truly a wonderful city, brimming with life and packed with many locations which are instantly recognisable as having ties to the world of Doctor Who and it's a place which rests firmly in my heart. And if you're the type of person who enjoys this type of video, please do check out my other documentaries on my channel, such as my trip to New York City to visit some of the iconic locations used in the Ghostbusters movies. And so we reached the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you're new to my channel, please hit subscribe for more videos and keep up to date with all my latest news and reviews by liking my Facebook page follow me on Twitter as well. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>